Hi, I'm Brian from iWire, and we're going to show you the difference between Subaru engines. Probably best place to start is displacement. This is pretty simple. On every block, you'll see a stamp. So you'll either most commonly see EJ25, or on this other engine over here, buried down in there, going to be a little harder to see, but down there, you'll see an EJ20 stamp. Uh -huh. That's just referring to the displacement. Displacement isn't enough. EJ25 and EJ20 is just a general term for displacement. So we need to take the next step and figure out what type of throttle body it has. So this engine here, drive-by wire. Lots of different varieties of drive-by wire, but at least we can identify whether it has drive-by wire. Or, like this engine, is a cable throttle. The next thing to determine what type of engine it is, is whether or not it has AVCS. So on this engine, you can see it more generally. It's a solenoid that would stick off the back here. This engine is more complete. You'd be looking for a blue plug. Sometimes they'll be vertical and sometimes they'll be horizontal, but always blue and attached to this piece right here. Both of these engines have single AVCS. They're very different, but they're both single AVCS. Some engines are what we would call dual AVCS. Some people might call it quad AVCS, but basically there would be a similar solenoid to this but down on the exhaust side. Most important things to note is cam position sensor type because if you're replacing a long block, this is going to be really important to whether it's gonna work in your car or not. So cam position sensor for uh, WRX like this, the main cam position sensor is gonna be in the front. So you'll see it here. And then more importantly, for the AVCS cars, you will either see a two or a three wire cam position sensor in the back. The earlier models use a two wire. The later models, usually figured with drive-by wire like our STI here, will have a three wire. You cannot interchange these. If your car came with three wire, you must get a three wire long block. If your car came with a two wire or is an early WRX that doesn't have AVCS, you must find one that's two wire. And the last thing that will help you identify which engine you have is the ignition type. So on most of the newer cars, you're going to see a, what we call a coil on plug. So the spark plug ties into the ignition coil directly, whereas older models, and this is how you'll differentiate a few of the older models from the newer ones, there'll be like a coil pack on top, and then there are spark plug wires that go down to the spark plug. So now that we've looked at the key components to help you identify which parts are which, take a look at the link in the description because we'll break down how to identify which engine you have based on those characteristics. So when you are sourcing a replacement engine, things to look for, nice complete harness. This harness is actually okay because all we really care about is the side on the engine, not on the body. So you wanna see this part intact. This part is just gonna come out later and be replaced by your original harness. The other thing you might wanna check when you, find, when you get an engine is condition of the connectors. So these look in great shape, but a lot of times uh, manifold position or idle, or sorry, manifold pressure or idle air control can be cracked and really common amongst older engines are going to be coil packs. If you have the engine out, I highly suggest you grab up our replacement coil pack kit and just replace these before you bother because you're probably going to do coil packs anyway. So double check all your connectors on the engine before you install it. Heck of a lot easier to do while the engine's out. Once you've inspected the rest of the connectors on the engine, you may need a replacement body harness depending on what you're doing. If you already have a turbo car, this should plug right in. If you don't have a turbo car and are doing a swap, you will need the body harness and matching ECU to go with your engine. If you don't have those, let us know. We can help you find them or supply them. So now that we've taken a look at from a wiring perspective, we're going to bring in Lance to show you things that you should take a look at mechanically.
All right, so quickly, you want to do a basic visual inspection of the engine. Make sure, you know, when you're looking at the block, there's no cracks. You also want to check the oil leaks. Um, if there is some major oil leaks, you will want to address them first. Um, the other thing I suggest is check belts, timing belts, accessory belts. Sometimes they come with the accessories, sometimes they do not. I always suggest, the, if possible, to kick over the accessories your vehicle came with onto the donor engine. Okay, so the next thing you want to do is check for oil leaks. Um, sometimes the engines come uh, pressure washed clean, sometimes they don't. If they don't, that is a good thing because you can check for leaks. Now you can see over in this section where there is some wetness. That's going to be an oil leak, most likely from the valve cover area. So you'll have to replace the valve cover um, when you're doing it. I highly suggest doing it now rather than when it's in the car and then you have to fight the car as well. Secondly, replace the spark plugs. Definitely put in some spark plugs, make sure your engine's got a good refresh and then any additional components that are sitting on top of the car, you'll want to remove them prior to installing the engine.